What is up, everybody? It's good to be here. I'm excited about this stream today. I'm excited about the chance to do a giveaway. Um, just going to check a few things and make sure everything's working pro properly before we get started. Uh, if you can see the pinned message or the uh, link in the description, uh, there is a link there for the giveaway. All you need to do is go in and uh, sign up using your YouTube account. And then at the very end of the stream, I'm going to uh, have the Gleam uh, site choose randomly from a, among the folks that have entered the drawing. And we'll pick a winner. I'm just checking a few things before we get started here. So it gives you a chance to go ahead and go enter if you haven't already. And apologize in advance if you hear any loud noises in the back. Two of my kids are upstairs playing Fortnite right now, so they're getting a little rowdy with it, as they sometimes do. My third, I think, is also playing something on the PC, but he's all the way up in his room, so he's two floors above me. So what I'm going to do, um, once we get started here in just a minute, I'm going to play the Wilderness Historic Battle. I'm going to play as the Confederates, only because they are heavily outnumbered, so I think it would be more of a challenge. Outnumbered 105 to 65. I'm just about ready to get started. I'll just check in to make sure everything's working properly. It looks like it is. Uh, Jackson, I don't know exactly. I would say at least an hour and a half. Uh, you don't have to be here when I do the drawing at the end to win, um, as long as you respond to me uh, in a timely fashion uh, when I reach out to you. Um, and in order to win, I think I put this in the description for it, uh, you'll have to be friends with me on Steam. Uh, and the reason being is that when I go in to purchase the game, uh, I'm going to have to choose purchase for a friend and it'll have to be somebody on my friend list so I can buy the key for you uh, for the game. Um, so Colin, I will, I will draw the winner at the end of the stream. Uh, so probably hour and a half, two hours from now, whenever that is, uh, I'll, I'll draw the winner. And if you're in here, it'll make it easy. If not, that's okay. You don't have to be still watching the stream. I understand not everybody can stay for the whole time. Um, so how's it going, everybody? I, I see all your comments. Um, no, I'm not going to be live streaming for five hours, Cartoon Rush. I have to put an end time for the giveaway when I set it up on Gleam, but I can go in and change it. And what I'll do is when I'm ready to draw the winner, I'll go in and change it to whatever time it is at the time, and that'll end the, the giveaway, the entries. And then I can have it, it'll randomly pick a winner for me from the folks who have signed up. So, uh, all right, so let's dive into the Battle of the Wilderness. Uh, yes, sir, Lauren, I am live. And, uh, uh, Basically, playing this Wilderness Historic Battle is just my excuse to have a live stream and chat with all of you guys and do the drawing. So, um, typically on these live streams, I pay attention probably about 50% to the game and 50% to the chat. So, uh, don't expect necessarily my best gameplay today. Uh, just want to let you know a couple of things while we're waiting for this to load. It does take some time to load. There is a new patch coming. And in fact, I'm going to check right now and see what they're saying on the ETA for the patch. Okay, three to four days right now is the patch uh, ETA. And they have, even since I announced it two days ago here on the page, they've added a, n a number of new things to what they're going to be editing in the patch. Um, just looking to see what else here. It doesn't look like there's anything real specific. Oh, sunrise is now in the east. They're going to fix that finally. Uh, the sun has been rising in the west on the game, so they're going to fix that. Um, retreating units cannot be stopped anymore. Improved scene loading speed. Okay, so the rest of that's fairly... Um, it was already there from before. Uh, Nathan, yeah, you can just add me as a friend. Uh, anybody's welcome to add me as a friend on, uh, on Steam. Uh, my username is... I believe it's History Guy Gaming. Let's, uh, I think it's what, Alt-Tab to, no, that's not it. Hold on, I'm going to find the, uh, 
maybe it's shift tab. Well, I don't have, the, I don't think I have the Steam overlay turned on, but uh, it should be History Guy Gaming. I'll, I'll double check here in just a second before we get started with the game. Yeah, it's History Guy Gaming, all one word, uh, is my username on Steam. Uh, so thank you. Uh, hello, uh, bonjour, Arno in France. I uh, took two years of French in high, three years of French in high school, actually. Um, Colin, yeah, you, they could friend me after you, uh, they win. I just can't uh, purchase the game until the person is my friend, um, because otherwise I can't send you the key. So, um, is there a big difference now? There's not really a big difference. It's just an aesthetic thing. Like I noticed the first time I played Gettysburg that uh, I was looking west as the Union, and there was the sun rising behind the Confederates. Um, if you're familiar at all with this game, you know that they've already really made massive improvements from when it first came out. Looks like we've got 26 entries already, so that's cool. Um, they, they've made massive improvements to the game just in the few weeks that I've been playing it. I guess it's probably been about a month now. Um, so I, I feel really optimistic about the direction this game's going and, and how it's going to end up. Uh, it's a lot more stable. I don't have all, you know, when we first started out, when we would do. Uh, a campaign, it would constantly crash, and I was having all kinds of glitching issues, and it made it really difficult to play a campaign. That's largely gone now. I really don't experience that too much, and when I have had the rare crash, uh, it's a pretty easy fix just by having Steam kind of check the file integrity. But uh, the main issue now is just um, making it competitive. Uh, I'm finding that either as the Union or the Confederates, it's just a little too easy right now. Um, I pretty much win every battle, even if I'm outnumbered. Um, and, uh, you know, just some things with the campaign, uh, with them recruiting and stuff, but that's all stuff they're going to get to. And they haven't even started dealing with things like adding new maps and all that stuff. That's going to just add to the gameplay. If they can, if they can make the AI competitive, uh, and then do all the other stuff that they're talking about doing on their roadmap, this is going to go down as one of the way, greatest war game, games in history, and I think definitely the best Civil War game ever made. Um, any news on the battle AI to get better? I know they've said they're going to fix the issue where the AI bunches up in one spot. Um, uh, oh, Gimlet, yeah, I'm going to get to some more CK3. I haven't been doing much of that because, honestly... Um, as a YouTuber, I, I kind of have to cater to the audience. And a video on this game on Grand Tactician gets about 10 times the views that a, a video on Crusader Kings 3 does for me right now. Um, so I'm not going to abandon it completely because I love the game, uh, Crusader Kings, and I want to play it more. Uh, just not going to be probably very often, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Ultimate General is fantastic, John. I uh, can't go wrong with that one. Um, I definitely got a lot of gameplay with that one. So let's take a look here real quick uh, before we talk more. And, and guys, feel free to throw your questions out about anything. Uh, these chats tend to go in weird places sometimes, but we always have a great time. We always have a, a lot of fun talking about history, uh, talking about whatever topics you have. Um, but yeah, I agree Civil War week by week. Um, a lot of promise here. Uh, I just hope it can live up to it. Uh, the main thing for me is that making it competitive right now in my Confederate campaign, I'm kind of holding back a little bit, um, because I'm trying to make it interesting and competitive. And I feel like if I wanted to, I could probably win it pretty quick. Uh, War Thunder, I may be streaming War Thunder tomorrow. I'll confirm that with you guys later today. I'll do a post later, uh, to confirm it, but that's the tentatively my plan is to uh, stream War Th Thunder probably tomorrow afternoon sometime Eastern time. All right, so who do we got here? We've got early... Uh, actually, I want to look at the order of battle. So right now, it uh, looks like we just have Yule's Corps uh, in position. Uh, we've got the first corps under Longstreet, second corps under Yule, third corps under Hill. Longstreet was severely wounded in the Battle of the Wilderness um, by friendly fire, <laughs> which it's kind of ironic if you think about it. The, um, the two most prominent most significant uh, deaths among commanders for the Confederates during the Civil War was Albert Sidney Johnston at Shiloh and Stonewall Jackson at Chancellorsville. Uh, and then probably the most significant wounding then would be Longstreet. All three were friendly fire or assumed to be friendly fire. 
I think it's pretty much confirmed that Longstreet and Jackson were, and it seems most likely that uh, Albert Sidney Johnston was friendly fire as well. If you go to the battlefield at Shiloh, they will tell you that it was friendly fire. Um, yeah, probably the usual battle rating, Connor. I haven't had a chance to upgrade mine too much. Um, I am going to be doing, uh, Lauren, more for the vlogging. In fact, I'm hoping this week I'm going to get down to retrace the final days of John Hunt Morgan's raid into Ohio. I live about a half hour from where he surrendered, and they've got a lot of great sites uh, down around that area. There's a John Hunt Morgan trail that goes all through Ohio. Uh, and I'm going to try to retrace some of his final steps uh, and do that. But I've also got a lot of other stuff to get uploaded, and I want to do some more live stream chats with that too. Um, some of our uh, supporters on Patreon, actually at the major general level, of which we have four right now, um, they actually, if they want to, can choose to have me do a live stream on a historic topic like I did with Hamilton. Um, they just haven't chosen to do that yet, but... Um, I'm always looking for suggestions from anybody, really. You don't have to be a patron for that. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and zoom in and see what we're looking at here. And like I said, I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to the chat, so um, probably not as much attention to the game as I'd like to. Yeah, Legio, you're right, from North Carolina. Yeah, Jackson was, was hit by North Carolina troops. All right, so who are we facing here? I'm just going to kind of sit back. I'm, I'm outnumbered. Uh, so I really... Let's see how many men we actually have on the field right now. So right now it's only 24,000 and 17,000. This was just an absolutely horrific battle to have fought in. Um... This and Chickamauga were just terrible. And of course, Longstreet was at both. Um, you know, just what these soldiers had to face, the terrain they were fighting in, uh, some of the things that happened during the battle, uh, just horrible. There's Gordon. Oh, Gordon's one of my favorite Confederate generals. He's just a, a tough dude, a great commander. Charlie Mack, next patch is 0.75, and it's, uh, I just checked, it's saying uh, three to four days away. Niall, how's it going? Three to four days away is the next patch, and I would imagine even between now and then, they're probably going to add some more things that will be going into that patch. They're always updating what will be in the next patch. So, yeah, I'm just, might might not be the best thing to sit back if he's not going to attack because I need to take advantage while we don't have that many Union troops on the battlefield. So I might go ahead and move forward here a little bit. I haven't decided yet. Yeah, Lars, that's a that's a great topic for discussion. Is uh, Morgan's escape from the Ohio State Penitentiary down in Columbus? Um, of course, he ended up being killed a year later. He may have been better off just to stay where he was. But uh, do I feel like the artillery is modeled well? Um, I think so, Bradfield, uh, Jason. Uh, it doesn't cause an obscene amount of casualties, but it does seem to have a big effect on morale, which is, I think, how it should be as artillery. Uh, it wasn't just the damage that the artillery did. It was the psychological impact uh, of that artillery on the battlefield. So in that way, it, it, at least to me, it feels like it does. All right, I'm just going to move them forward just a hair for now. Who are we facing on the other side right now? Ouch, Michael, that sounds painful. So two things. Number one, if you guys would hit the like button, I would greatly appreciate that. And number two, if you are interested in um, winning a copy of this game today, uh, just click on the link in the description and enter. You just have to use your YouTube account to enter. Uh, and I'll be drawing that at the end. Uh, I want to look and see. I want to look at the Union forces that we're facing right now uh, and see who they are. 
Are they all here now? Fifth core, sixth core, second core. Let's see who these brigades are under. Schweitzer. So this is Governor Warren. This is the fifth corps that we're facing. Warren was commanding the fifth corps at this point. Yeah, Jason, I understand what you're saying. Uh, no, the artillery doesn't really have that much of an impact. The sexiest president is Martin Van Buren. <laughs> I've heard people say that um, Franklin Pierce was one of the more attractive presidents. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, not being attracted in that sort of way to men, I, I can't really give a fair assessment. Colin, very cool. In my opinion, was the most important battle that the Army of the Potomac was not a part of. Oh, Vicksburg, without a doubt. Vicksburg was just tremendous in terms of the impact that it had uh, on the war and on the Confederacy. Uh, people don't realize how much that hurt the Confederate economy to lose the Mississippi River. Hey, Jim O'Hare, what's going on? Good to see you. You guys, you see there where it says William O'Hare, and he, I think he goes by Jim. Um, probably the longest running supporter I have on this channel that's still around, that was around at the very, very beginning. Uh, so I'm grateful for that. He was around when I had maybe 2,000 subscribers, maybe even less than that. All right, there's Johnston's Brigade. Who we got here? Colin Battle. They all got different colored pants. I love it. There's Stephen Ramsier. George Doles. Yeah, a lot of these guys were brigade commanders, even going back to Gettysburg. There's the Stonewall Brigade. Hey, Russell, how's it going? I agree. Uh, Wilson's Creek, very important. Helped secure Missouri for the, con or for the Union. Kind of caught me advancing with these guys, and my battle lines really in disarray at the moment, especially in the center. I'm listening to an audio book right now um, called Vicksburg. Uh, let me see if I can see who the author was. It's really, really good, and uh, one of the reasons that I think it's good is that it doesn't just talk about Vicksburg. It really starts with the beginning of the war, kind of when Grant's in Cairo. Uh, talks a, a little bit about Fort Donaldson, Fort Henry, uh, Shiloh, all of it leading up to and how it all ties into what happened at Vicksburg. Um, and they actually, there's a really strong emphasis on the naval aspect of all that because the naval war, war on the Mississippi was every bit as important as what was happening. Uh, in fact, the, the Navy took New Orleans pretty much single-handedly. Um, so let me look at my library here. I want to tell you who the author is. It's called Vicksburg by Donald Miller. And it's very, very good. I'm about uh, a third of the way through it now. I haven't even gotten to... They haven't even started talking about the attack on Vicksburg itself. Connor, that's awesome. I'm glad you've been around since then. And Jim, thank you. I appreciate that, as always. What do I think the Confederates could have done better in the West Front? Um, find a, a good, competent commander. Maybe send Longstreet out there earlier. Um, and put all of the forces under overall command of one person. Um, 
I think if they had given Lee the authority that Grant ended up having in 1864, uh, giving that to Lee maybe sooner in the war probably would have helped. I think command structure on both sides was ugly in the West, as is this fighting right now. Let's see. I'm going to go all the way back up and see what the casualties look like so far. Because we're going to have to have major odds in our favor for the casualties if we want to win. Because there are going to be a lot more men showing up on the field. Nelson, that's okay. I appreciate your support, buddy, patron or not. The most confusing battle of the Civil War. Oh, Connor, that's easy. Chickamauga. Chickamauga without a doubt. And actually, Chickamauga was lost because of the confusion of the tactical standpoint. They say that at Chickamauga, uh, that even brigadier, even brigade commanders couldn't see their entire brigade. Uh, so basically, everybody was just leading about what they could see in front of them. What ended up happening at Chickamauga was that Rosecrans thought there was a hole in his line, and there wasn't one. Because he couldn't see. He couldn't see much more than a brigade, if at all. Uh, and uh, because he thought there was a hole in his line, he pulled troops from one spot to plug a hole that wasn't there, and in the process created a hole that was there, and ended up losing the battle because of it. Uh, so I would definitely say Chickamauga. Probably a close second would have to be Wilderness. Uh, just because of the denseness of the trees, it just made everything really confusing. He's really coming at me now, but boy, this is just so kind of a confusing mess. I thought about doing Chickamauga today on the stream because today is actually the, it's, we're at the anniversary of the Battle of Chickamauga right now, which was just a couple of days after the anniversary of Antietam. A lot of uh, Civil War week by week. Have you been to, you live in St. Louis. Have you been out to the Bellefontaine uh, Cemetery? And I think it's Cavalry Cemetery that's right next to it. A lot of Civil War generals buried there. Uh, I've actually visited both. I made, made videos on them, actually. Um, Pope's buried out there. Um, Amara Hancock, Hancock's wife, is there. Sherman's buried in St. Louis. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. I think Sterling Price is buried there. And then Cincinnati, Ohio, there's a big cemetery, Spring, Spring Grove Cemetery, I think it is. Uh, Joe Hooker's buried there. There's a few others as well. Yeah, commanders didn't have the ability to zoom out and look at a map like I do. That's right. They really just had no idea what was going on. Looks like my one battery broke. All right, so here's what I need to do as best I can because uh, we're doing okay over here on our flank, but I'm not so sure about what's going on over here. So... Uh, we're going to shift Johnson over. Oh, we got a perk available. I'm going to give everybody iron discipline as best I can. Yeah. Pretty much everybody leveled up already. Not, not quite on Jones so far. I want to I want to visit as well uh, next time I'm in Missouri. I, I definitely want to visit the Grant Historic Site out there where his farm was, where his where his in-laws lived. Hey, hey, sweet, what's going on, Robert? How's it going? I've Legio, I've. I've been briefly to the cemetery uh, at the Battle of Franklin site. Haven't been really to the battlefield. Uh, I was there in Nashville for something else uh, and had just a little bit of time and happened upon the cemetery. All right, so we've got this brigade going over to try and help plug the hole that the Union seems to have breached in my line right there. Though you can start to see that there's a number of Union units that are breaking. I need to zoom out and make sure there's no reinforcements that have come in. No, I don't see any. And 
And that that one here, I think Stone's Brigade's going to break here in a minute. Who is the best general and why is it Dan Sickles? <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Um, I, I, I did a post about this the other day. I was pondering. I, I couldn't honestly choose one general as being the best general, but I'll tell you for me who the best generals, plural, are. Um, on the Confederate side, obviously Lee, um, though I, d I don't view him as, you know, reverently as everyone does. Um, definitely Longstreet, definitely Jackson. Though, again, Jackson, not the perfect specimen of a general a lot of people make him out to be. Um, you know, if you look at Jackson's Valley campaign, he followed that up with some pretty poor perform performances uh, during the Seven Days Battles. Uh, not his finest hour. But um, uh, another guy that I don't think gets nearly enough credit is Claiborne. I think Claiborne was a very good general for the Confederates. Um, Albert Sidney Johnston may have been, but we'll never know because he really didn't have a chance to, to show that. Um, <laughs> JJ, that's funny. Um, give me one second. I'll get to these other, the other questions. Uh, on the Union side, uh, I have a great appreciation for Grant. I, I do not believe he's the butcher that I used to believe him to be. Uh, that just won by brute force, like a lot of people have tried to claim. I think his... Uh, Vicksburg campaign was brilliant. Had some tough moments, but it was brilliant. Uh, he had a great understanding, uh, not only of, of what it took to win, but the importance of coordinating with the Navy, uh, the importance of understanding your opponent, things like that. Uh, so I have a lot of respect for Grant uh, as a commander. George Thomas, fantastic general. James McPherson was a great general. Uh, who was loved by everybody who served with him. Probably would have been president after the war if he hadn't been killed in Atlanta. Edmund Kirby Smith, very good. Um, so anyway, uh, what battle could I observe if if I could? Um, wow, you know, honestly, it would be... I'd really just... Any battle of the Civil War because I, I would love to have a better appreciation for what it was really like to be there. Um, but for me personally, I would have to say... That it would be. Um, hmm. I don't want to give the answer that anybody would probably give and say Gettysburg. Um, honestly, probably Shiloh, just because it's a, a battle that I had several ancestors at. Hey, take care, Niall. Do I think if the war continued, where would the next ma major battle take place? If it continued, when? You mean like after Richmond? After Richmond fell? After the surrender? Do I think this formula will work with other time periods? Beautiful sunflower. Yes, and I believe that's their plan. Uh, is to use this format, this game engine with other uh, time periods. Uh, the, the folks who made this game actually made a game, a Seven Years War game, before this, that's similar to this. It's not quite as fleshed out. Uh, it's not quite as in-depth as this one is, but it has similar features. But I believe that is their plan. All right, so we, we've we broken him for the most part, but he, he got a couple of guys through the center. So Actually, I'm just going to tell Rhodes to bring his whole division over this way. An average range of how far battle lines would be from each other for shooting. Um, oh, probably 150 yards would be a decent average, I would say. Um, but, I mean, you have battles like Gettysburg where you had the 24th Michigan from the Iron Brigade and the uh, 26th North Carolina firing volleys at 20 paces. Uh, think about that for a minute. Think about standing 20 paces away what what is that 30 40 feet maybe um away from four or five hundred men all firing their guns at you at the exact same time i 
it's no doubt why the casualties were as obscene as they were in some of those units on the first day at Gettysburg, especially the, the 26th North Carolina, who just pretty much lost everybody in that battle. Atlanta. Uh, I actually almost said Atlanta for the battle that I'd want to see because, uh, again, that was one I had a number of relatives that fought in. Yeah, American Revolution would be very cool for this game. Yeah, if, if Lee, you're, I would agree with Alan. Uh, Lee's plan was to uh, rendezvous with Johnston, try to link up uh, down across the board, the southern border between Virginia and North Carolina. Um, so yeah, probably there. Iverson's brigade. Uh, yeah, Iverson did not necessarily have his best days at Gettysburg. Um, I did. I did play the um, the Seven Years' War. Like I did, like a first look at that game a long, long time ago. Um, so look at the casualties: ninety five hundred casualties for the Union already, three thousand for me. And so now the the numbers, at least on the field, are pretty much even. All right, let's get Gordon's brigade leveled up now. Uh, we got to drive these guys off and try to reform my battle lines. What is this? Did somebody arrive? Hancock arrives. So this the second core. Yikes. Where are my reinforcements? I need Longstreet and Hill. Alright, so let's get Yule. Uh, we're gonna fall back and reform our battle line right here, I think. Favorite Confederate cavalry commander. Um And Gavin, I'll get to yours in just a second. Favorite Confederate Cavalry Commander? Uh, oh, gotta be Nathan Bedford Forrest. Um, lousy human being, for the most part. Fantastic general uh, as, a, as a cavalry officer. I think Shelby Foote said that you know, Nathan Bedford Forrest was one of the authentic geniuses that came out of the Civil War. Um, yeah, that's completely separate for, from some of the stuff he did afterwards, which I, I will not defend at all. Um, but as a commander only. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So my thoughts about the game, I mentioned this at the top, but for those who are just joining us, um, if they can make the AI competitive, and I don't think it is right now, uh, I think it's way too easy to win. Uh, if they can make the AI more competitive and, and more of a challenge and whether they can do that or not, we'll have to see. If they can do that, and if they do everything else that they've said on their roadmap that they're going to do, add new maps, uh, so it's not just the same couple of battlefields you're fighting on all the time, um, kind of work on some of the other aspects of the campaign. If they can do that, I will have no problem whatsoever saying that this is the, not only the greatest Civil War game ever made, but might go down as probably one of my all-time favorite strategy games. Um, but right now, my main concern is the, the competitiveness of the AI. They fixed a lot of the stability issues. It doesn't crash much anymore. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of the glitches that it, that it had uh, even recently as a couple of weeks ago. Um, the AI is a concern for me because I really haven't felt like there's been much of a challenge uh, from the enemy. So we'll see. Yes, Clorox Bleach. He did rise from private all the way to lieutenant general. Believe it or not, you know who else did that? And it was a completely different issue. But Albert Sidney Johnston, actually, when he resigned, because he was Johnston was actually already a general in the Union Army when the war broke out, which is, makes him unusual among the Confederate commanders. Uh, in fact, he was the only one, I think, uh, on either side that played a prominent role in the war who was a general before the war started. Um, but he resigned and actually enlisted as a private in some Los Angeles militia regiment that was pro-Confederacy before he went east and ended up getting uh, a command as a general uh, in the Confederate Army. Now, that's not the same as Forrest because uh, in Forrest's case, he did enlist as a private. He used his finances like a lot of like, – like Dan Sickles did. Dan Sickles got his command like a lot of people because he used his connections, used his his wealth, his influence to raise troops, and that got him his command. Uh, and and Forrest kind of did the same thing, but 
Um, see, hey, hey, Avizel, I, I, I don't agree. Um, you know, if you're answering a question about what kind of a commander somebody was, then you're, you're then you're talking about their military. Um, that's that's going to be true about any historic figure. Um, it doesn't invalidate their accomplishments just because they were a lousy human being. I think Napoleon was a lousy human being, but he was a, a great general. Um, and there were guys on the Union side who were lousy human beings. Um, didn't negate their accomplishments. Uh, pretty much any historic figure in history, uh, there are aspects of their lives that uh, I don't think anybody should celebrate. And we're having trouble getting back here, and it looks like he's starting to come at me, so I'm trying to pull my forces back and, and get a new battle line built. But hey, that's why we have the discussion. You're free to your opinion, just like I am. Um, Zach Mills, he was. Burnside was absolutely stuck in a super difficult spot, um, which is why I think he forced that attack when he really shouldn't have. Am I getting any reinforcements at all? No, it doesn't look like it. Come on, guys, we gotta get back. Oh, now he's got me kind of stuck here because these guys have reformed over here. Who's arriving? Anybody arriving? Hill's arrived. Sedgwick's arrived. Okay, so the sixth core is here. Uh, Hill's third core is here. Not much of it yet, but they're starting to get here. Yes, uh, Sherman, well, Sherman did not start the Civil War as a colonel. His first, um, his first appointment in the Civil War was a colonel. When the war broke out, he was like Grant. I believe he was a captain, but had left the army. He, he left the army around the same time Grant did in the mid-1850s. Um, yeah, Connor, um, certainly some things about Patton that are not, uh, Vlad the Impaler did nothing wrong. Changed my mind. <laughs> uh, it was a different time, Vlad the Impaler, what he, that he lived in. What he did um, from the standpoint of the time period and how people operated, yeah, probably would not have been viewed as, as that horrifying. Oh, Edward Johnson killed in action. Uh, who was wounded? Stafford wounded. A sweets, I absolutely agree, um, and I think the Confederates defending um, Fredericksburg, uh, Maurice Heights, would be the first ones to say how brave the Union troops were for making that charge. Hey, Vizzle, I, I'm not praising, and I, I agree. Um, same thing with some of the um, German commanders. I agree. It's not praising. Uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest to say he was a great general because he was. I mean, I think that's just a, a fact. It doesn't mean I praise him. It doesn't mean that I like him. And it doesn't mean that that I ignore the awful things he did post-war with the Klan. Yes, Hank Hill. Sherman was a brigade commander at First Manassas, uh, as was Ewell and I think Longstreet and some others. Uh, no, he did not, no, Tyler commanded Tyler's division. Um, Sherman was a brigade commander in Tyler's division. All right, so we broke those other units. We've got to get, oh, there's Harry Heath's division. Let's get him up here. We're going to actually send him into the center, I think. Who else we got here? Heath have eight brigades in his division? No, he's only got four. These guys are with somebody else. That's Wilcox. Okay. They're in double lines at the moment.
Yeah, Rommel's a great example. Um, I don't I don't know personally enough about Rommel to really feel comfortable diving into his feelings on you know the Nazi Party and things like that. Um, I would imagine he was at least pretty quiet when it came to the Nazis, or else he wouldn't have risen to the level of command he did. Um, so he certainly could be criticized for not speaking out more um, about the treatment of the Jews and things like that. But again, that doesn't take away from him as a commander. Clark's Bleach. Um, I think Forrest is probably up there as far as generals who kind of um, had that level of fighting. Uh, a lot of times the generals who ended up being killed in combat, it was because they got too close to the fighting in situations like that, some of the higher-ranking ones. I think of um, Phil Kearney um, during uh, the campaigns in 1862. That happened with McPherson uh, in Atlanta, who was an army commander. Interesting thing about uh, James McPherson. James McPherson was the only uh, man of army commander rank in the Union Army who was killed during the war, but he was not the highest ranking Union general killed during the war um, because highest rank kind of depends on when you were promoted and things like that, uh, and that would be Sedgwick. Uh, Zachary Smith, after the war, Forrest was actually the first Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. Now, he later somewhat repudiated that and criticized the Klan for how far they went but he certainly was very sympathetic to their cause. Yes, Sean. Um, now, what Sherman had going for him, and, and yeah, Sean, you were absolutely right. Technically, Sherman outranked Grant for a, a decent chunk of the early part of the war. Um, but Sherman, we don't have Grant without Sherman. Sherman's the guy that kept Grant in the Army when Grant was really frustrated by how he was being treated by Henry Halleck. Um, and, you know, Sherman really major struggles with mental health issues. My guys are all bunched up down here. What Sherman had going for him were political ties. His adopted father and his brother were both U.S. senators. Yeah, I was just talking, uh, Legio, a little while ago about Claiborne being, uh, who I feel was one of the top generals in the Confederate Army. Sedgwick was killed at Spotsylvania by a sniper, and his last words were they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. Boy, this is just a mess there in the middle. We're going to have to get Hill's forces up to help hold the line. But yeah, um, that's something Grant doesn't get en enough credit for in the post-war years as a president. He came down hard on the Klan. He created the U.S. Justice Department, which we still have today, as a way of fighting the Klan. Hank Hill, I don't know for sure if that's true. Somebody else might be able to address that, but it wouldn't surprise me if that's true uh, about Forrest and his slaves. All right, we got these guys coming up this road. Let's see what the numbers look like here. Who's on the field? And All right, so he outnumbers me 2-1 to one with forces on the battlefield, but we've got him better than 2-1 to one with casualties. Jackson, I agree. Um, I don't think in talking about, for example, Forrest being a great general, that we should gloss over kind of the, the personal aspect of who he was um i'm having an ai moment yeah my men are all bunching up in the center there yeah and uh sweets actually um johnston was also a honorary pallbearer at grant's funeral as well as um do i think the ap hill committed suicide um, no, but I think it was reckless, his actions, especially so close to the end of the war. 
maybe it was an issue where he kind of didn't care about what happened to him. I don't know. Edward Johnson was killed. I'm trying to rally what's left to his division. Here come the uh, probably second or sixth corps troops coming down the road now. I'm going to get Wilcox over here. I, I need to get these guys into single line. James, I agree. I don't know anything about the Paraguayan War, unfortunately. Jay Reese. Yeah, Russell, good point. We do have the gift of hindsight. Uh, and Rain, yes, I've played quite a bit of Total War. Um, same issue with this game as Total War, and that's the AI kind of being stupid at times. Of course, I'm just not doing well with my forces in general here right now, so... All right, we're going to go get all these guys into single lines the best we can. Yule's forces are pretty much toast. What, what is Jones doing all the way up here? All right, Rhodes, pull your division back over here. Let's get Heath over here. Man, I still can't get him into a single line. What's the deal there? Let me go all the way up to... Oh, we've got another division down here. Anderson's division under Mahoney. Um, single line right here. If you haven't already, make sure you enter the contest. There's a link in the description. I'm going to be giving away a copy of this game uh, at the end of this stream. Yeah, this battle is an absolute mess, Silver. You're right. Uh, it started with me advancing when I should have just sat still with my unit. Um... Who was Jackson? Stonewall Jackson, really. Um, Stonewall Jackson was a weird dude. Um, he was a hypochondriac who had some very peculiar perks. Uh, constantly sucking on lemons. Didn't have chairs in his house uh, because he thought that sitting down uh, made his organs sit funny in his body. All right. Why are we still waiting on Mahoney to get moving? And why are these guys all falling back? What is the deal here? And now... Oh, I thought it was going to crash for a minute there. Um, very deeply religious man. And that motivated him greatly. Uh, Zach, thank you, sir. Connor, I don't know if the South would have won. Um... But it's possible. Uh, the South's best chance for winning was, uh, honestly, the South's only chance for winning was forcing the uh, Northern public to stop supporting the war. And so I guess that probably would have helped with that to take Washington. Yes, and Sean, uh, raising his, his one arm, actually got him wounded at first Manassas. He got shot in the hand, and it was the hand he had risen, raised over his head. And you can actually see that a little bit in the movie Gods and Generals. When he gets wounded, he's got his arm up in the air above him. I'm trying to figure out why my troops are uh, they're finally starting to back up. Of course, Yule had a wooden leg. I think it was second Manassas he lost the leg. James Fairpoint, all history is lies agreed upon. Yeah. Yes, Jackson commanded a corps at his death. And and Lee broke it up and, and split it into the second and third corps under Hill and Yule, who had both been fantastic division commanders, but were not great corps commanders. Yeah, Sweets, I agree um, with what Foote said. Uh, but, but I don't think that the British would have ever intervened on behalf of the South as long as they had slavery. That would have been really difficult for them to explain on the home front. If 
had a time machine, where would the f- be the first place I would go? Hmm. Wow. I'd like to meet Ulysses S. Grant. Um, I don't know. I'd go back to the 1850s and just tell the guy, listen, keep, keep being who you are. And you'll get there. What did Beauregard do after Fort Sumter? He commanded an army in uh, Virginia at first Bull Run. And then he went west and ended up taking command at Shiloh after Johnston was killed. Silver, I don't know. I, I think the whole Atlanta winning the election for for Lincoln's maybe a little overblown. I think Lincoln probably still would have won. But I could be wrong. All right, let's get Jubal early to pull what's left of his division back. In fact, I'm just going to tell Yule to pull everybody left in his core back. Give them a rest. We're going to build our battle line here. Do I think Tallahassee would have been attacked? I don't know that Florida was a huge priority for the Union, honestly. Um, Guan, I'll get to, uh, to your question about president. Um, I want to get to this other one. Uh, oh, Zach Mills, you're talking about Captain... Um, no, it, it was... Um, he had a staff member who was Jackson's brother-in-law. It was his Jackson's wife's brother, um, Morrison, Captain Morrison. Um, somebody asked a question. Oh, uh, the size of, of units. It, it varied uh, depending on, on attrition and, and things like that. But typically, um, when the war started, it was a regiment was raised with 1,000 men. But most of the regiments, especially by this point in the war... Uh, two or three hundred in a regiment. Uh, and so then a, a brigade would have three or four regiments in it. Um, a division, you know, two, three, four brigades. And a corps, two, three, four divisions. My leader's still at the edge of the board. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out why that is. Oh, he's not anymore. He finally came up. Or did he? Yeah, Lee's up here now. All right, we got Wilcox on the right, Heath on the left. And we're going to wait for the Union to kind of come down through these two bodies of water. Yeah, Civil War week by week. It happens with me, too. I get so involved in the chat that I'm kind of only half paying attention to what I'm doing in the game. Alan, yes, initiative's on. And I apologize if I don't see your comment or your question. Uh, feel free to say it again if you need to. I'm checking right now, see how many entries we've got in the contest now. We're up to 77. Awesome. Were there any language barriers among commanders? Um, no, I don't think so. But yes, there definitely were commanders for whom English was not their first language. Um, come on, you'll get all your guys back. I need you to fall back behind the Third Corps. My favorite president. Um, and see here again, I'm torn because there's people I like personally that I think would have been a great person to be a friend to and who I thought was a great president based on their performance in office. Um, yeah, Teddy Roosevelt was a, a tough SOB. I mean, that guy, he was a cool dude. Um, but... Uh, I personally like Grant the most. Actually, the end of day really helps me here. Um, but he wasn't a great president, especially because of the people in his administration. Um, wow. This is a tough one. Because every person I might say, I immediately think of reasons why I wouldn't say them. Um, I think I'd probably go with Lincoln. Though I'll say this about Lincoln. I, I think Lincoln had no trouble with kind of bending the rules to accomplish what he needed to or what he felt he needed to. And they kind of addressed that in the uh, the movie, Lincoln. Let's get Rhodes's division up here on the right. Actually, I'm going to put him right up on the water here.
All right, let's continue on. Not Wilson. No, not Wilson. <laughs> Wilson's one of my least favored presidents. Zach Mills, I believe it is, but let me take a look. I liked Reagan. Reagan's my favorite president in my lifetime that I can personally remember. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with just how, how good he is uh, in, in, as a communicator, I guess. FDR was a tough dude, overcame a lot. Again, there's a great example of somebody who was a great leader, but maybe morally not a good man uh, in some ways. I'm just catching the... Uh, chat here Clorox bleach I'm gonna I'm gonna respectfully decline to comment on current politics um, I have very strong opinions on politics but I, I, I keep those to myself on the channel um, I don't want to alienate anybody I'd rather focus on the things we have in common which is our love for history yeah Wilson was a, a major racist I mean honestly for the first 150 years of America's history, um, I would I would say it's probably not a stretch to say the majority of presidents were racist by today's standards. I am not as high on FDR as a lot of people are. I think his leadership of uh, the country during World War II was fantastic. Um, I think you could probably throw the word tyrant at um, Lincoln as well, sweets. Um, but as for his pre-World War II performance, not I'm not so high on. Um, I don't think some of the things that FDR did really helped the country all that much. All right, he's coming at me over here. This is a good spot here. It's, it's high ground. It's got the stream in between. We gotta get Junius Daniels brigade leveled up. I'm giving everybody iron discipline that I can. I don't know why we have two brigades right there. Robert, I would love if they did more movies like Lincoln for other presidents. We gotta get Wilcox moved up. Let's get Heath moved up a little bit. Not, oh, he is, he's got the orders, they just haven't come yet. He only sent one brigade at Rhodes' division. That's crazy. Hey, Tar Hill Billy, how's it going? I'm just looking around to make sure there's nothing else I need to be aware of over here. So I have a few brigades back here just in case I need to throw somebody in somewhere. So, uh, interesting little tidbit for you if you're familiar with the Lincoln movie. Uh, the main kind of antagonist in the house uh, is a guy named Pendleton, George Pendleton who was an Ohio congressman. He was actually, first of all, um, he was McClellan's vice presidential running mate uh, in the 1864 election. Uh, but he's also the grandson of Nathaniel Pendleton, who was Alexander Hamilton's second in his duel with Aaron Burr. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, Alan Hand, if you haven't already seen it, uh, the Ken Burns documentary on the Roosevelts is fantastic. Um, but yeah, a Teddy Roosevelt movie would be interesting. Uh, they made um, a movie about, was it about the um, the Rough Riders? Uh, with, what's his name? The, the, um, Tom uh, Berenger, the same guy that played Longstreet in the movie Gettysburg. He played 
Teddy Roosevelt. Hey, Tactics Gaming, everything is well. How are you doing? And uh, yeah, it, the game, whoever asked, I, I saw somebody asked about the uh, the bugginess of the game. It's much, much more stable than it was on release. Uh, honestly, the major issues that uh, exist with the game now don't have to do so much with the bugginess. Although, it, as you can see, it still has some little glitching here and there. Oh, Ken, Ken Burns Civil War is one of the reasons I fell in love with studying the Civil War. And Alan, I, I saw that DiCaprio was one of the producers of the Grant mini, the Grant series on History Channel. A movie about Grant would be fantastic. Um, I mean, his life is like made for Hollywood movie. Uh, just some of the stuff he did during the the revolu or during the uh, Mexican War, uh, some of the hardships that he faced, uh, some of the stuff that happened during his presidency. Uh, it would be a fantastic, like a, a TV miniseries or something. Oh, it'd be so good. I'd, I'd give, I'd give my money to help make something like that. Not that my money would help much, but hey, Robert, take care. Um, an overall review. I've kind of done a few reviews about it. This week, I'm going to try to get out some uh, tutorial videos on the game to help with some of the questions that people seem to have about it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, anything I've seen, his baseball, Ken Burns' baseball miniseries was also really, really good. I agree. Anything I've seen of his is great. All right, I think we've kind of stabilized our line unless he decides to come down from Saunders Field and hit me over here on the right. Uh, could they make more movies about non-American, non-British, non-German history? They could, but that, I think, requires more people who are non-American, non-British, and non-German to make them. Um, I think that's why you see that, because that's who the audience is. Jake Gyllenhaal needs to play John Bell Hood. <laughs> You know who's a spitting image of a general, and he's he's too old to play him now, probably. But um, oh gosh, he played Buck Compton in uh, Band of Brothers. He's a spitting image of Hooker. He looks just like him. And actually, there was talk for a while they were going to do a series called Two Appomattox, and it was going to follow a number of the generals from their time at West Point all the way up through Appomattox, and and they had talked about him playing Hooker. Uh, in that. In fact, I'm going to... Oh, and you know who else is Nick Searcy, who's way too old now to play him, but they talked about him playing Joseph Johnston, and he looks like Joseph Johnston. I'll tell you some of the others that were listed in the potential cast for that, because it's pretty interesting. I'm going to pull it up, because I think it's still on um, Internet Movie Database, imdb.com. Yeah, they talk about Damian Lewis, who played Winters in Band of Brothers, playing Sherman. I don't know how many of these were just wishful thinking on people. Jason O'Mara, who again was in Band of Brothers um, as Grant. He was um, Lieutenant Meehan in Band of Brothers. Um, Richard Spate Jr. as Nathan Wexler. D.B. Sweeney as James Longstreet. Dwight Yoakam as George Meade. Um... Carl Edwards, the NASCAR driver, as John B. Gordon. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Kevin Farley, Chris Farley's brother, as Henry Halleck. Gary Lavox, the lead singer of... Um, oh, what's the name of the group? Uh, the countries. Oh, I, this happens to me all the time anymore. Neil McDonough, Zach, thank you. That's who I was thinking of about Hooker. Um... Powers Booth as Albert Sidney Johnson. That's interesting. Kix Brooks, the country singer, as Winfield Scott Hancock. Patrick Gorman, who played um, Hood in Gettysburg and Gods and Generals, as Charles F. Smith, who was a division commander under Grant. Stephen Lang as John Brown. Oh, man. Speaking of John Brown, there's a great series coming out that includes him. The Battle of Krasny, I have heard of that. Hey, take care, Civil War week by week.
You got to meet Buck Compton, John Hoffman. That's so cool. He was a a, a larger than life figure, I think, even after the war, after World War II. Did I watch the Grant miniseries? Uh, I loved it. I wish it had been a lot longer. I think they spent so much time on the Civil War that they didn't cover some of the other areas of his life that I think are just as fascinating. Um, I would highly recommend anyone who is interested in learning about Grant uh, to check out Ron Chernow's biography. It totally changed my opinions about uh, Ulysses as Grant, not only as a general but as a human being. Yeah, the 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 battle um, aspect of this game is is very similar to um, Scourge of War. I feel like the Union's got a lot of men that they aren't attacking me with, and I'm not sure why. Let's look at the numbers. See, he's oh, he, he's down to just forty nine thousand men now, because um, we've inflicted eighteen thousand casualties. Him and Don Malarkey were there. Don Malarkey just passed away not long ago. Sean, I just started watching Barbarians Rising. I just finished the first episode of that, um, where they talk about the, the battle with the, the, with the Lusitanians. Um, tactics. I would say it's pretty playable now. The AI is not real good. Um my favorite old school war movie. I guess it depends on how far back you want to go for old school. Uh, here, let's zoom in for a little while and watch the fighting. Hold on. Um, I guess it depends on how you define old school. Um, I'm a big fan of movies like Sink the Bismarck. Um, it was a really good one for me, uh, The Longest Day. Uh, why do I enjoy Band of Brothers? I, I love Band of Brothers, number one, because it's, it's a true story, which sets it apart a little bit for me from um, Saving Private Ryan, which has a lot of fictitious uh, aspects to it. Um, but what I love about Band of Brothers, not only is it a true story, but you get to know the characters, uh, the people, and you get to really appreciate who they are and you get attached to them. Um, I've actually uh, gotten to speak a few times. I haven't met any of the guys from Band of Brothers, but got, I've I've gotten to know um, Bill Garnier's granddaughter, uh, and we've chatted a few times, which is really cool. Um, I agree it's hard to compare the two, but I think when this is a finished product, this will be the better game. Uh, sweets, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. We're going to get your Florida boys in there, I promise. Um A bridge too far is great. It's very good. The Pacific was good. Um, it wasn't as good as Band of Brothers for me. I never really got attached to the characters in the Pacific like I did. There were some great moments. Like Probably one of my favorite moments in the Pacific is actually a moment that doesn't take place during the, the war. It's when, his, when Barcelona's wife goes to return or to give his Medal of Honor to his family. Uh, and I just thought that was a really touching moment to see the home front that way. All right, up to 134 people in the uh, stream. That's awesome. Make sure you subscribe um, and make sure you enter the contest if you're interested. I'm going to be giving away a copy of this game here at the end of the stream. Um, we're about an hour in. We'll, we'll fight this out as long as I can. Probably go an hour and a half, two hours at most. And then I'm going to draw a winner. We'll see how many entries we have right now. And the only thing with that is uh, if you do win, you'll have to be friends with me on Steam. We've got 100 entries. Um, you don't have to stay here for the whole chat, uh, for the whole stream. But um, you will have to be friends with me on Steam. So when I go in to buy the game, I can choose purchase for a friend and I can, I can send it to you. Letters from Iwo Jima is very, very good. I agree. Yeah, Jag, I agree. The Korean War is very forgotten. You know, almost as many Americans... I'm, I'm just speaking as an American. I know not all of you are. Um, 
almost as many Americans died in the Korean War as in Vietnam, um, but it's largely forgotten. My uncle, my great uncle was in the Korean War and it was tough. He, he described, he was in the infantry on the front lines and described seeing these human waves of just thousands of men charging across open fields at them. Um, Yeah, Ashier, yeah, that's a good point about uh, Sink the Bismarck. Favorite American commander during the Spanish-American War. Um, oh, that's a tough one. I don't know enough of them to make a fair comparison, but um, I think Teddy Roosevelt's story is really cool. Um, kind of goes from politics into the Army, and then from there into vice president and then president and just a span of a few years. Uh, one of only two sets of fathers and son to both receive the Medal of Honor. Sean, uh, to friend me on Steam, it's History Guy Gaming, all one word. Uh, if you just look at my username here and just take the spaces out, uh, you can send me a friend request on Steam. Uh, my, uh, a cousin of mine, his name was William Stillwagon. He was in a Pennsylvania volunteer uh, unit, was the first soldier killed in... Uh, in the Philippines, on ground, first infantrymen. Uh, they landed on the beach, and he was the first guy off the ship, and he was the first guy to fall. Have I executed um, the on uh, signal function yet? I haven't tried that yet. I think that'll come in handy much more when the AI puts up more of a challenge. It looks like he's trying to get around me now. It's about time he, he figured that out. So we're going to have to pull roads back. I, Michael, I agree. I, I loved the, the latest Midway. I thought it was very good. If I watched Navy Log, no, I'd have to check that out. Your grandfather got a silver star in Korea. Very cool. First American medic into Auschwitz. Wow. That's that's quite a legacy there, Will. Steven, thank you, first of all. Um, but uh, having problems with army construction. Uh, hopefully I can address some of that when I do some tutorials up. But uh, specifically, what's the issue that you're having with the army construction? The Army of the Potomac's piecing out. I'm not sure if they're doing that or if they're trying to get around my flank. I'd like to think that that's what they're doing, but then again, I know the AI is not that smart. The Marvel version of World War II. And yeah, you don't have to win the, the giveaway today to send me a friend request on Steam. Anybody's welcome to do that. And if you're new, definitely join us on Discord. There's always a lot going on. I'm not always there. You know, I, I try to check in at least once a day. But there's a lot of folks who are pretty regular on there. JD, what's going on? All right, so we're going to pull Rhodes back just in case because it looks like he might be doing that. It's funny, though, that he left one brigade over here at the Orange Turnpike. So um, let's go ahead and send Heath's division forward to deal with them. Oh, no, I want the whole division. Thank you. There we go. That's James Rice right there. Uh, I believe that's Colonel James or James Rice. Um, I think he ended up being killed in 1864. Uh, he was the guy who I think took over for Strong Vincent on Little Round Top when Vincent was mortally wounded. Um, he was one of the other regimental commanders uh, that was to the right of the 20th Maine. Combining armies is hard. Units are easy, but moving units between armies. Um, it's just really a matter of you have to hit the transfer button and pull up the the to and from armies side by side in that transfer window, and then you just drag it. Um, so if you want to drag a division, you just drag it over to the arrow. It's hard for me to describe without actually showing you. Let me look at the order of battle here. So what you would do is say, I don't think I can do it in here, um, but say in the game, uh, I could click on this division here and just click and hold it. And then drag it over to say Yule. And Yule will have a little arrow that's right here in that screen. 
and you just drag it over and when that arrow kind of highlights you let go and it'll drop that whole division into Yule's uh, Yule's core Gustav, I think that's what made um, some of the movies great, like, um, what is it, Heroes of, or um, um, Flags of Our Fathers and stuff, um, showing both sides' perspectives without automatically making it obvious who the hero is in a movie, I think makes for a much better film. All right, so we're moving forward here. He looks like he may not be trying to outflank me. He just might be drawing his battle line back there. So we might have to advance. Nice, Michael. Third rate. Ewan, thank you for the friend request. I'll make sure I accept it when we're done here. Where are you across the pond exactly? I assume by you saying that that you're probably in the UK. So I'm curious to know where. My team did terribly this morning in the Premier League. I'm a West Bromwich Albion fan. Just entered the Premier League and just had an awful first two games. My son's a Manchester United fan, and I know they're playing right now or just about finished. I should check and see how they're doing. They were playing uh, Crystal Palace, I think. Oh, they're losing. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's without spaces, Gracious. Um, it's uh, History Guy Gaming, no spaces. Sweets, I agree with the mindsets of people. And I often get asked the question about, you know, was the South fighting for slavery? Was it about states' rights? I think the problem most people make is they try to make it either or. It was both, and uh, it depends on who you were. Uh, for the politicians in the South, it was absolutely about slavery. Um, for the average soldier fighting, and even a lot of the generals, it was about states' rights. It was the North is invading us and we're defending our homes. So both are true. Sheffield United had a really good season last year, uh, Sean. Uh, I think much better than anybody expected. That's a good time to be a Sheffield United fan. Oh, yes, you and I, I do remember uh, talking about that before. State of Jones is cool. Will, um, it depends on what you, where you're putting them. Um, that dis, the, the time to muster is, it's really not about mustering. It's about the distance to the army that you're placing them in. Um, so if you're making an army in Tennessee and you're recruiting Tennessee units, they're going to appear pretty quickly. If you're recruiting a Texas unit to fight in the Army of Northern Virginia, you're going to have a long wait for them to arrive. Everton, oh, Zach. Dude, Zach. Everton, that's a team that kicked my team's butt today. Micah, how you doing? Hey, Micah, thank you so much. Micah is one of our major general level supporters on Patreon. I'm grateful for that. Jim, awesome. I will make sure to accept your friend request. Uh, Colin, I think your number is way off on the number of uh, families that own slaves. I think it was more like 10%. Recruited from Virginia, Will. Yeah, that doesn't seem right.
All right, I'm taking a look here. Um, I'm just looking up a, a statistic because I want to get it right. Uh, it's difficult with the the number of people who own slaves because um, talk, whether you're talking about families, individuals, things like that. But I believe that the percentage of Southern families that own slaves was like between ten and fifteen percent. Yeah, our right flank's about to be in trouble here. Um, who's this here? Mahoney's division. Yeah, Magnus, I don't know where Google's getting that statistic, but I don't believe that's true at all. Hey, take care of tactics. While this is playing, I'm going to I'm going to try to look up a, a reliable source on this. Here, here's a study from Duke University from August of this year, actually. In some states, like Mississippi, South Carolina, the Deep South, it was pretty high. Um, But they're saying in the states that actually joined the Confederacy, the number was just south of 20%. <laughs> what the Union needs to win the war is a core of the M4 Shermans. Yeah, in places like Virginia, the much uh, Virginia and Tennessee, the the slave owning numbers were much much lower than that, which is why you saw Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, and Arkansas did not join the Confederacy. They didn't secede until after Lincoln called for volunteers, because to them that was the primary issue. Oh no 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 no. Uh, to to those states, the primary issue was the aggression of the federal government, not slavery itself. Compared to like Mississippi, where yeah, Mississippi, I think the majority of whites own slaves. All right, so he did try to outflank me there. Now here's the thing: um, the AI team seems to perform better on the. Uh, historic battles because I left it on historic AI so he's got a series of moves that he will try to make that are kind of programmed in that don't exist in the campaign which is why I think you see some of these flanking attacks and things like that happen on here where they don't happen in the campaign hey Russell take care man Yeah, Gracious, I agree. Um, you know, the, the invention of the cotton gin really kind of kept slavery alive in the United States. Uh, and yeah, places that weren't what were considered the cotton states, you know, the Deep South, those were the cotton states. Places like Virginia, where it was much more about tobacco, they didn't have the need for slaves. Oh, snakes and powder is a good one. Yeah, I'm thinking if we kind of withstand his attack here, then maybe we push through the center. Let's, what kind of numbers does he have now? 
So he's down to just 46,000 men. We've taken out a third of his army. Michael, I'll have to go back. Uh, have you watched my video from Snakes and Powder? Because I think I just did that one recently. I'm trying to remember what I did to win. Of course, now they have the ability you can turn off the uh, the scaling, which is nice. All right, let's push Heath forward. Oh, see, they're going back to the double lines, and I hate that. Turn off the double lines. I don't have enough men to do that. I gotta wait until the order filter filters down. Wait, he's going way down over here. Yeah, Zach, I saw that Gareth Bale's going to Tottenham. I should have become a, a Tottenham Hotspur fan because I'm Harry Hotspur, who they're named after, is one of my ancestors, Henry Percy. Yeah, like uh, Civil War and Micah said. Later in the war, they finally started to figure out um, the tactics to go with the the weaponry. That that was kind of the problem early on in the Civil War was that the um, the technology was so far ahead of the tactics that it took a while for the tactics to catch up. Darn it! Stephen, I I agree. I wish more people knew and loved history. Um, it's always been a passion of mine. Three Collins. Usually we have a lot of Zacks in the chat. I don't know where those guys are going, but uh, it definitely seems like this is an opportunity to advance and take out part of the force. What is battle doing? Let's send Rhodes' division forward. We'll send Wilcox forward. And I guess we're just going to have to deal with them being in a double line. Hey, sweets, take care, man. I'm going to go ahead and do the drawing here pretty soon, I think. Let's see how many entries we're up to now. 114. Okay, cool. So pretty good odds, guys. And this isn't something um, I, uh, you know, I didn't get like a free key. Like sometimes game companies will give me a couple of keys to give away, like Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts did that. They gave me five of them to give away. Um, I don't have anything like that. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna be buying it on Steam as soon as this is over. That's why you need to be friends with me so I can buy it for you. Um, I, I just thought that it was the least I could do because I know I've I've talked a lot about it, especially on the Grand Tactician videos lately, the patrons. Um, but I've been so blessed the last couple of weeks by the number of people who have signed up to financially support this channel on Patreon that I thought it was the least I could do would be to start doing giveaways more often. Um, and that, that's not to say that I don't appreciate everybody who, who, who doesn't support on Patreon. I absolutely do. I wouldn't have a channel without you guys joining in these chats and watching the videos and commenting. I appreciate every single one of you. I'm grateful that you're a part of this channel, no matter how you choose to support the channel. Uh, so thank you for that. But it's just one little way I can give back. And I want to do more of that. I'm going to try to do more giveaways moving forward. And one of the nice things about having all the support on Patreon is that it allows me to do that. All right, so we'll let him get around us. We're going to try to crush this part of the army that's this way. 26 North Carolina. Very cool, Stephen. My uncle Andrew Jackson McGuire was killed on July 1st, 1863 with the 26th at Gettysburg. 
Uh, Gracious, you make a good point. Um, and actually, I, I have talked to the developers sometimes. Um, in fact, they, they reached out to me on Twitter recently uh, and sent me a message asking me to kind of hold off on the Confederate campaign until they did the new patch. I started it anyway, so I apologize to the developers for that. But the, the new patch is coming soon, so and it's been pretty sta uh, stable for me so far. You just made some enchiladas. Nice. We had Wendy's for lunch here. I had I took my son to soccer this morning, strength and conditioning, and uh, we stopped and got Wendy's on the way home. Have I tried the community hotfix mod? I have not. But I've seen it. Now he's down to 27%. So he must have got some more men on the field. Oh, we're starting to get low on ammunition now. Let's zoom in. This is a battle that it's tough to zoom in and be able to control your army. Colin. Colin ST uh, in this case. Uh, I, I understand that totally, and I absolutely appreciate the fact that you you subscribe and watch the videos. That, that is a big, big help, and I'm grateful for it. Now there's General Mead. Oh, hey, let's kill General Mead. Can we do that? I don't even know if that's a thing you can do, but we're going to try. Steve, you probably make a good point. A lot of people do base their knowledge of history on what they see on TV or in movies. Darth Targaryen, interesting name, Sean. I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. Oh, Panther, yeah. Trenches were, were huge in the Civil War in the last year or so. Uh, what happened to Meade in real life? He died, I don't know, 1872, I think. He, he died after the war, pretty much retired after the war. I played Cossacks 2 a long time ago, Parabellum. Uh, Stephen Jones. Uh, Andrew Jackson McGuire was his name. Um, let's see if I can tell you what company he was in. But I know he was in the 26th and he was killed on July 1st. He was a brother to one of my ancestors. So he was a, an uncle to me. So we're trying to push through the the Union here. Oh, geez. He came down here and hit Kershaw, who arrived. That's the first of Longstreet's men to arrive on the field. Yeah, I mean, there were there were trenches at Vicksburg in 1863. Um, and of course, they you know they existed going all the way back to I mean trench warfare was always a thing. It was used at Yorktown during the Revolution, but it was really kind of on a wide scale in places like Petersburg and Vicksburg. How long is left on the day? It's two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, AI was more aware of my troops than I was. You're right. So we're just kind of pushing through this mess over here. I don't know if you can kill generals like that, but I think you can because they're on the field. In fact, let me pause for a second. 
There's the six core commander, so that's Sedgwick. It should be anyway. I can't really see. Uh, it doesn't look like you can charge the commander specifically. Was my favorite theory of history for the Civil War. Um, I guess you'll have to be more specific what you mean by that. Like, why was it fought, or what do you mean? Or, you know, kind of looking back on the history, I guess I'm not, not sure I understand the question. All right, let's push forward here. Well, at the end of the day, Magnus, um, my troops will get resupplied. Let's see what the numbers look like now. About the same. Zach, I actually agree with you that Hitler escaped Argentina. That's the one like historic um, conspiracy theory that I actually buy into. Alan, I have been to Kennesaw Mountain. I was there the last time I was in Atlanta a couple years ago when I traveled there for work um, because I had a couple of ancestors who fought at Kennesaw Mountain. What would have happened if Davis sent Lee West? Hmm, I don't know. It's interesting to think about it's so difficult to compare the Western and Eastern theaters, like you said, because of the room to maneuver. I mean, Lee basically had one job, and that was defend Richmond. It was, uh, and all the Union commanders in the East had one job, which was take Richmond. It was very confined. Whereas out west, you have okay, we've got to secure Kentucky. Now we've got to secure, con uh, secure Tennessee. We've got to get the Mississippi River. So we've got to get the railhead at Corinth, and we've got to take Memphis and Vicksburg and New Orleans, and you know, there's just all these various targets. Uh, the objectives, yeah, I mean, those are the objective points you're supposed to be taking. I don't know how much of an impact they have on the game itself, or if it's just more of a way of forcing you to head to points to kind of force a conflict and a confrontation. All right, let's bring Longstreet's whole force forward. Uh, Jaeger, I don't know that him making it to Lynchburg and linking up with Johnston would have prolonged the war all that much longer. Um, cause Grant wasn't going to, Grant was going to be relentless in pursuing him. Uh, I don't think it ever was going to stop until it was over. Well, Lee did send Longstreet West. Just not as, um, he, he couldn't send Longstreet West as a commander, uh, of an army because Lee didn't have that authority. Uh, he sent, they sent Longstreet's core West to fight at Chickamauga. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, Lee didn't have overall command like Grant did. Yeah, it's not really a mountain wheel, but, I mean, compared to the ground around everything, I guess it's pretty high. No, I agree, the AI is not there yet for this game. Gracious, that's the difference that Grant understood. Grant understood it wasn't just about taking Richmond. His objective was destroying the army. And I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's what he said to Meade was wherever Lee goes, there you go also. Because he understood that. That was one of the things that was brilliant about Grant. Grant understood, and Sherman did too, what it took to win. Better than most, I think.
I agree. It would have been interesting. Uh, Longstreet's kind of more defensive mindedness would have served him pretty well in the East. War Thunder, uh, Hanson, I'm hoping tomorrow. Uh, probably same time as this today. Uh, at least that's the plan. I'll post later on about it and let you guys know for sure. But that's my goal is probably maybe maybe like 2 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow we'll do a War Thunder live stream. It's been a while. Could the Nazis have won World War II if they hadn't attacked Russia? Um, if they hadn't attacked Russia and... Yeah. Uh, I guess it kind of depends on what happened besides that. It certainly would have helped their odds, for sure. I guess it depends on what Britain would have done at that point. If Britain fell, you know, if they don't attack Russia and they're able to actually invade Britain, yeah, maybe. No, I don't think the South had any hope of winning a guerrilla war like that. Lauren, no. Lee was not giving over, given overall command of all Confederate forces until 1865. It was like a month or two before the war ended when he was finally given that authority. Lee had command of forces in Virginia, and that was it. Yeah, you and I think that's a fair observation. Lee was the last of the old-style generals. Grant was one of the first of the total war generals, as was Sherman. Oh, this is a mess down here. He had way more men down here than I realized. What's going on here? Some melee combat. Have I seen Dukes of Hazard? Oh yes, I watched that a lot as a kid. Uh, I'm going to say, um, we're at 142 now, about five or 10 minutes. We're going to go ahead and do the drawing here. Um, so if you haven't already entered for a chance to win the game, uh, this is your last chance to do that. Go ahead and click on that link. You just got to sign in with your YouTube account to enter. Uh, the civil war was, uh, at least in the West and late in the war, I believe it was total war. Because if you think about it, it was economic. Uh, you know, the, the Union from the very beginning was trying to strangle the South's economy. Um, they certainly went after the infrastructure of the South, and the, you know, by trying to take their slaves, uh, try to remove that as an. You know, I would say it was total war. A brigade surrendered. The enemy brigade under Colonel McAllister was thoroughly whipped out by my men, and the remaining 2,104 men have been captured. Thank you, General Longstreet, for that. It's just a mess down here, too. Oh, yeah, what shared, absolutely, what the uh, Union did in 1864 in the Shenandoah Valley, that's total war. All right, let's push up this way with all of Longstreet's forces. He's down to just 50,000 men, so I've got him pretty well whipped. Nice, Lorne. Lorne was one of our ultimate admiral winners 
back when we did those drawings. So we'll push through to the end of this day and we'll see what happens. But I think I've pretty well got him. Yeah, Napoleon, they, they basically gave him Moscow, but he uh, he paid for that one, didn't he? Um, I don't think they went after Lynchburg because I think they were confident that they'd stop Lee before he got there. Um, and they did kind of a do a pincer um, if you think about it because they did uh, go out and get around Lee um, Sheridan was brilliant in those final days well, there's a lot happening here I think these are a lot of Union units that are leaving the field so he may not have a lot left yeah, he's down to just 47,000 men on the field. 33,000 casualties. All right, we're going to have to send Kershaw down to deal with Webb. Kershaw's lost half his men. We'll watch this for a few minutes. All right, well, uh, we got 136 people watching. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the drawing. So let's go ahead and see how many entries we've got now. We've got 126. Very cool. Uh, so let me go to Gleam. I have to go in and first kind of close out the entries. So bear with me for a second because I won't see the chat while I'm on this other screen. All right. It's cool because it, it tells me where everyone is that entered. So I've got Aberdeen, Scotland, Mount Joy, PA. Bear, Delaware, Monroeville, Alabama, Perkaski, PA. We got Moscow, Russia. We got Norway, Verona, Italy. Winona, Minnesota. We have a Winona here in Ohio, about 20 minutes from me. Middlesbrough in England, Greenville, North Carolina. I'm just reading all of the locations. Salt Coats in Scotland. Brussels, Belgium. Berlin, Germany. Cortez, Colorado. Pittsburgh, PA. All right. Nottingham, England. Hey, whoever's what if you're still in here from Nottingham, my uh, my direct mail line, my father's 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 father, that line comes from Nottingham, comes from Edwin Stowe. All right, let's do this. Let's draw a winner. And the winner is it's still drawing. Here we go. Wendy Green. Dragon Chick 83 uh, is the email address in Oklahoma City. Wendy, are you in here? Or that is, uh, I haven't actually seen that person in the chat, I don't think. Steve, uh, artillery very often got massed. Uh, it wasn't necessarily the the norm, um, but it did happen a lot. Uh, you can look at battles like Malvern Hill. 
um, Shiloh. Obviously, Gettysburg are examples of massed artillery being used. No, I already said that you didn't have to be present um, to win, but if I reach out and Wendy doesn't respond in like a day or so, then I will certainly draw again. Um, so congrats. And this won't be the last one of these I, I do. We're going to do more of these. Uh, there will definitely be more drawings. Uh, so make sure you subscribe and, and get the notifications because I'll let you guys know when we're going to do those. We'll try to do those much more often. And thank you to everybody who has supported me through Patreon because you are the reason that I'm able to do things like that. Um, because I'm finally at a place, and, and I'll close with this. And I apologize to those of you who have been around because uh, I know you, many of you have heard this many times before already. But for anybody who might be new... Um, Jim, uh, I'm going to accept all the Steam requests as soon as we're done with the stream because I've gotten a bunch of them. Um, but uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I live in Northeast Ohio here in the United States. Uh, I majored in history in college, but um, never went into that as a, as a, um, a field of, uh, of a career. Um, I'm actually, my, my day job, so to speak, is uh, that I'm a national speaker. Uh, travel around the country for an organization called Rachel's Challenge, where I speak in schools, elementary, middle, high schools, about kindness and compassion. We share the story of a girl named Rachel Joy Scott, uh, who my daughter is named after. I have a 15-year-old daughter, a 13-year-old son, an 8-year-old son. Um, my daughter has a much more successful channel than I do. She's got 150,000 subscribers on hers. But our daughter, Rachel Joy, was named after Rachel Joy Scott, who was killed at Columbine. And I work for the Scott family, who are some of my dearest friends, some of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life. They live in Colorado. Uh, their daughter was killed at Columbine. We share Rachel's story. Who, Rachel's been one of my heroes uh, for over 20 years now. Um, and I can't do that right now because, you know, most schools aren't having assemblies. And so... Uh, myself and my 20 uh, fellow colleagues who are speakers for Rachel's Challenge are pretty much at home with no income right now. Um, so your support, subscribing to this channel, watching the videos, uh, so, and uh, hitting like and commenting, the support of the folks on Patreon are, are feeding my family and paying my bills right now. So I'm grateful for every single one of you for that. Um, Yes, I'm a Buckeyes fan. <laughs> I'm I'm actually wearing a Youngstown State shirt right now because I actually live near Youngstown. But uh, uh, my wife went to Youngstown State. I am a Buckeyes fan. I am a Cleveland sports fan. Um, Indians, Browns, Cavaliers. My wife's a Steelers fan because we actually live an hour from Cleveland and an hour from Pittsburgh. We are smack dab, like literally to the minute, right between the two cities. Uh, in fact, my house is within sight of the turnpike, which runs between the two cities. So I'm going to reach out to Wendy. I've got her email address. And uh, if she doesn't get back to me in a day or so, uh, then I will do another drawing. And I will reach out with someone uh, if they win. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up right there. I think I've pretty well won the Battle of the Wilderness. It's not technically over, but he's only got 45,000 men left. Uh, so we're going to wrap it up right there, but I will probably be streaming again tomorrow. Uh, just uh, watch either Discord or the uh, the posts here on YouTube for that. So, um, yes, the Browns did just win a game. Thank you. Uh, it was against the Bengals, yes. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to head out right now. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of the stream. Looking forward to doing it again sometime. Take care.